Hi, this is CS106A, Assignment 6, uh, Name Surfer. Uh, today we'll be working on Milestone 2, and we're going to implement that, and then we're going to test the file. So we're not only are we going to create the functionality of the Name Surfer entry, but we're also going to make sure that it actually works appropriately. Um, the one thing that we want to make sure we do is realize, uh, uh, to understand what is the purpose of Name Surfer entry. So, what Name Surfer entry does is basically it reads in a line from the name surfer database which is our names data and when it reads that line it chops it up into two parts one with the name two into the uh, rankings okay there's many ways you can do this um, I've seen people use hash maps I've seen p people use tokenizers uh, personally um, I don't think well tokenizers is a cool little functionality but rather than use a tokenizer I'm going to stick with using an array list. Okay. Um, so let's get down to it. So the first thing that we want to do is understand the two parts that we need to create in the name, name surfer entry. One, it's going to be the name. So let's, I'll stick it up here. Private string name. Okay. Uh, we'll initialize it to nothing. And then we'll also need an array list. Um, we know the dimensions because there's only 12 of them. So int of the decades. And to make sure we don't confuse decade with the parameter of decade in this method, we'll call it decade array. And then <clears throat> we'll go ahead and set that up with the int of the end decades. So we can go back to our constants. You'll see that the end decades is right there. Copy control, copy. There we go. So we've got those two variables set up, and those are the ones that we really actually need. Um, okay, uh, the next thing that you want to do <coughs> is to give the program a little bit of functionality. So in name surfer entry, what we're going to do is realign, and we want to store the name into the string name, and we want to store the numbers into the uh, decade array. So what we're going to do is first separate the uh, so we'll go ahead and put name equals and we'll split the string so take the line we're going to say substring of of from zero to the index of the space so that's going to be line dot index of the space okay now how do I know that well to, uh, I, I know I've been going a little ahead of myself but basically you need to look at this string right here. It's got a string, space, digit, 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 space, digits uh, after SAM. So what we want to do is to parse out the name. So we can do that by getting the index of 0, which is where the S starts, up to where the actual uh, name ends. Okay. So when we do line dot substring of you know, 0 to the index of that space, we can store that into the string name. That will be our name. Okay. At the same time, once that's done, you really could go down to this method, get name, cheat a little bit and say, oh, okay, well, all you have to do if you want to get the name is to return the string of name. Okay. Uh, the next thing is, is that we need to now create our string of the digits. We don't want that name in there anymore. It's not necessary to us. So I'm going to create a, another variable, and let's call that <coughs> private string of nums okay so we got a string of nums now string <coughs> and we'll set that as the substring from you know where the index of the line goes to the end so the first index of the line to the end which is just the way it is now the thing that you gotta make sure is that you want to trim it so that there is no space at the beginning and the end so we hit dot, and there's a method for it, so it's dot trim, which will cut out the space here. And if there's any space at the end, it'll cut that space out at the end. doesn't seem to be a space, but, I mean, it's a cool little function just to make sure that none of that happens. You might get, a, like, a, an error based to, due to the actual space. And um, <clears throat> instead of having to build the algorithm for separating the numbers in this name for entry, well, let's go ahead and make a method for that. So let's call it separate the numbers, okay? 
and we're going to input our string of nums, which means that we'll need to create a method. So to create a method, create it out here, private void separate nums. We'll put our parameters of the string nums inside. Okay. Now how are we going to actually separate this? Well we know how many spaces there are in our array list. There's 12. So we can use a for loop because we know it does it 12 times. And rather than just do it 12 times, I'm going to do something a little differently. I'm going to do it 11 times and then add the last one a little differently. And you'll see why because it's not exactly the same as the other parts, but you'll see. So int <coughs> parts is equal to zero. And parts is less than the number of decades. Okay. So parts plus plus. And you should be really familiar and comfortable with using a for loop. The next thing is let's go ahead and pull out our um, pull out the slice. So let's say we want to take out the 58. So we'll call you know we'll call that by uh, taking it out and putting it into the string slice. Notice how I put string because it's not actually a digit. It's still in string format. And uh, to pull it out, we'll go to nums dot the substring from the zero to where the number is, which is the index. So it'd be nums index index of that space. Okay, and then chop chop. All right. So that would be the slice for the string. Um, we can even go a step further and. I could wrap this whole thing into a parse num. So, <clears throat> you know, creating variables is cool. Next step, I could have just put, you know, that uh, slice into the space for a decade array. Um, people don't like to always use additional variables, they like to try to limit that. That's fine too, and I'll show you how we can do that. So now we have it as a. Uh, as a, a input it into a string called a uh, slice. Now if you didn't want to do that then we can just simply take that out and use something called the integer parseint and now what does this have to do with anything? Well our string is currently a string so it's a string version of our number but we want to change it into an actual value so integer dot parseint would change our string number 58 into a number of 58. Okay, and instead of having it go to a variable, we can simply stick it right into our array. So decade array of the decade, which is represented by parts, is equal to the thing that we want to put into, which is the substring. Okay, so that's how we can stick it all into that one line. Now the next thing that you want to do is to make sure that once we take out that 58, we want to shorten the that list string so that now the next one that's going to go through will be 69. And to do that, you go to nums equals to the num substring. And the substring of what? The index of the space. Okay. And we're going to add one to it because we're not talking about the index of this space we're talking about the, the starting digit after that space. So starting from 6, which is what we have here, it will create that whole um, string of that uh, string of uh, digits. Okay. Uh, once that's done, um, you can now go down to your get rank. This is pretty easy. You just have to return the decade array and of the decade that you want to return. And notice how it has to be decade array because we have a parameter called decade that's an int. All right. One last thing that we need to cover is how to compile our two string. Now, what's the purpose of this two string? It's really for debugging uh, to make sure that you properly uh, separated ranks and you know got the name, and now you're putting it back together. And we want to make sure that it works, so we create a test program for that. Um, to do this, all you have to do is call it instance of a variable called result. That's a popular one. Initialize that. And we're going to go ahead and put it together. So result, and how do they want it to put it together? Well, you need to go to this guy right here. 
So we've got quotation marks. Okay, I can do that. So result plus equals to the quotation marks. Now to put a quotation mark, it's forward slash quotation mark. Okay. Um, and then we've got to add the name. Uh, so that's going to be our name. And then we're going to add a space, open brackets, and then we'll start adding our digits. Okay. Which we can do it by using a for loop. Right. So int i is equal to 0. i is less than the number of decades there are in this here. So n decades. And then we're going to go ahead and simply count it up and go ahead and stick all that stuff in. So result, what we're going to add is result plus equals to the number. That's going to be from our decade array. And that index would be f using the i. Okay. And then we're going to add a space afterwards. So after we put the digit, we'll put a space. Okay. And then we're not going to have it go through it 12 times because in the last one there is no space after it. So we're going to go ahead, go ahead and have it do it 11 times. Okay. And then after our for loop, we're just going to simply add that last one on by ourselves. So uh, decade array and then the 12th the 12th one, which by the way, because the index of an array starts from 0, make sure it's n decades minus 1. So it's 11. Okay. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we will need to finish the rest of that. So you add, um, and we're going to add the close brackets, and then the quotation marks, so forward slash quotation mark. Okay? And that's how you complete the two string. Now make sure you return the result, and it will give you, you know, the whole string text of Sam and that whole text. Now, in order to create a test uh, class, and I don't think we've done this before, so you need to go click on the C button at the top, create a new Java class. We'll call it the test entry. Make sure it's inside the package, uh, not the package, the folder for assignment six. Here, uh, we need to still import the program because we need to use the graph, uh, the pro console program so ACM dot program and we're going to extend the console program okay so public void run alright the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, write a string the test string so string test and what are we going to test we're going to test this guy right here Sam. So go up, <coughs> copy the string, put it inside, okay? And then what we're going to do is uh, run it. So if you want to run the name surfer entry, uh, what we need to do is create an instance of it. So private name surfer entry, so in, uh, and we'll call that entry. And uh, inside the pub void run, we're going to create entry is equal to um, new name surfer entry, and we need a string, so string of test. Okay. The reason why it has to be inside, not outside, is because we initialize our variable string test, and so we want to make sure it's initialized before we get to put test inside the parameter. Otherwise, it's going to come out as an error and say, hey, where is this string called test? Well, you can't do it unless you put it in a certain order. I'd rather not put it in the same area, so we'll just put it inside the run method. And then uh, print the line, and uh, we'll test each one. So print line, get name, and make sure that it's going to be given to us, so get name. We also want to print a rank, so let's print the middle rank. So let's say get rank. Oops, which rank should we get? We should get uh, get rank. Oops, get rank. Uh, let's say the second one, okay? And then we also want to print our two strings. So uh, two string and add entry to string and see how this works. So we run it. Test entry. Yep. 
oh, source not found. Okay, this is cool. Now, in, when something like this happens, so it doesn't show up, you need to go to your debugger. So this is the first time we're going to try this, okay? Um, what we need to do is to go through the steps to see what went wrong. So I go to here, which is, okay, so this is where we get the string, initialize it, and there it is. And here is where it gets the numbers. Now notice what happened here. Um, this happened because the string index is out of bounds. Okay, so when the string index is out of bounds, uh, it happened because here, uh, if you remember, there is no space. Okay, on the last, on the last one, nine nine seven. Okay, so the easiest thing to do when we separate the nums is to, again, go with the one with the digit before, so whatever that was, so 4466. Four, four, and then outside of here, we want to add the last one. So we go decade array, um, and then this time it's the 12th digit. I know I did it for the string, and I didn't do it for the separate nums, so we're just doing it up here. Integer parse int, because we still need to parse it. And, and parse int really changes the string line to a string int. Okay, so again, to do that uh, for the last one, we just go simply just put in nums, because it's already on the last one. Okay? So now, when I run the program again, there should be no uh, error exception. So let's see. I hit quick run. Okay, I'm still getting an error exception. Uh, array index out of bounds this time. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know why it uh, ran it. Oh, I see <laughs> the index. Right, there is no. Um, rem remember, there is no uh, value of 12 in our decade array. It only goes from 0 to 11. 0 is the first one. So that's a little stupid of me. Um, okay, so I run this again. Now it should be. Oops. Test entry, test entry. Okay. Run the test entry. And there you go. So here we tested to see what the name was. That's Sam. We tested the second entry. And that second would be right here because it starts at 0. So 0, 1, 2. And then the two string method where we want to put the whole thing together. And that's. That's right. So that's the solution for um, for Milestone 2. Please like and subscribe. And you had a little chance to look at how the debugging worked, and then you also had a chance to look at uh, how to create a test class to test your uh, individual classes. If you have any questions, uh, like and subscribe and comment. Lots of comments, and I will try to get to those comments so that I can uh, answer your questions. I now have a Twitter account, so. You can contact me through Twitter, and I can still, you know, see if I can direct you to the right places and help you out there. Okay. Well, anyways, thank you very much, and uh, this is Kai signing out.